Welcome to First United Church in Fort Saskatchewan, Alberta. My name is Paul Douglas Walford and we're so happy that you're able to join us this morning as we celebrate the Festival of the Gift of the Holy Spirit. Please note that today will be a communion service and you're invited to join in with the communion at your home using juice and bread as are available to you. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Holy God, we come this morning offering to you our thanks and praise for your blessings given to us over this past week. Your word reminds us that your steadfast love is new every morning. As we come this day, reveal your love to us again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us as we worship you. Let your Holy Spirit enable us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Help us to offer to you of our best as we worship, for you are worthy of our praise. Be beside anyone who is alone, anyone who is sad or sick. Comfort those who are mourning. Give us the eyes to see the ways that we can help our neighbors and give us the words that we can say to offer comfort and care. Show us again how we can be your presence to those who may be without hope. Go with us into this time of worship and grant that all that we'll do will be acceptable to you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. 
Our scripture reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the cloud, crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. And now, O God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Today we would traditionally celebrate the birthday of the church. Today, the Jesus movement, the movement which consisted of his disciples and those who followed him, became not just a movement, but became the church. Today, the promise of Jesus that the Holy Spirit will come upon them occurred, and Acts of the Apostles reminds us that they were gathered together in an upper room and then the Spirit came with the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Pentecost, we must remember, is not so much originally a Christian celebration. It was originally a harvest celebration of the people called the Jews. It was a day to celebrate the giving of the law to Moses. Therefore, many people would have been coming into Jerusalem, pilgrims, to celebrate this festival. Fifty days after the Passover, we find the disciples gathered in an upper room, still uncertain about public perception about them, still uncertain about their own safety. They are gathered behind locked doors in an upper room. Luke is clear, however, that it's not just the 12 who were gathered in the upper room. Others were with them. Other persons, including women, were among the men gathered in that upper room. And then it happened. The Holy Spirit came. And as we would say, the rest is history. 
Jesus had promised his disciples in Acts chapter 1, we read, that they were to remain in Jerusalem and they would receive power. The Greek word for power is dunamis. And from that word dunamis, we get the words in English, dynamic, and also dynamite. Dunamis seeks to speak to us about power, not just ability to do things, but a dynamic energy that is occurring when it is there. The disciples locked behind closed doors now had power, power from the Holy Spirit to do that which they needed to do. As Acts chapter 2 unfolds, we notice what this power enabled them to do. First, we note that they were given the power, the ability to speak in different languages, not just in audible or words that does not make sense. They were able to speak in languages that others could hear. This harps back to what we read in the book of Genesis of the Tower of Babel. That at that time when people wanted to prove their own power, they had created this tower and instead of it being a unifying force, languages seemed to have been created and then there was disunity. We must not assume that Acts chapter 2 takes us back to the, power, the Tower of Babel. Instead, what we find is that instead of language being a source of division, language itself falls in place. And although they speak different languages, they are now able to communicate with each other. There is diversity. Diversity is not spurned. The disciples have the power to celebrate diversity Celebrate that there are people who are different, that people from different languages are able to come together in one place to glorify God. Able to celebrate that people from different parts of the world are able to come together and hear the word of God preached to them. They had power to celebrate diversity. And mind you, this diversity only starts now in Acts chapter 2. For mind you, only those who are Jews are in Jerusalem. By the time we come to Acts chapter 10, we see that diversity is expanded to include even the non-Jews. For even all persons are included in the love and grace of God. They had power to celebrate diversity. My friends, they had power to move from behind the closed doors and causing even people on the streets to hear the message that they speak. There is power for them to do the things that Jesus wants them to do and to proclaim the goodness of God. No longer locked behind closed doors, no longer locked into a God box as you would want to call it, but now out on the road, causing passers-by to hear, causing that the word and the good things that God has been doing is shared beyond just those who are gathered with them. They had power, power even to stand up in the face of criticism. That morning when the disciples received the power of the Holy Spirit, many thought they were drunk, Many thought that they had drunk new wine, good wine, and they were drunkards speaking in languages and in words that made no sense. Peter, in getting up to speak, points out that no, they're not drunk. He counts out to the people the things that God has done, and in his preaching, publicly in the face of criticism, still many were brought to believe and to know the goodness of God. You know, it is said that the Holy Spirit tends to be that one person in the Trinity that we tend to often not speak much about. People suggest that the reason why we don't speak much about the Holy Spirit is that too often in church we want order, and the Holy Spirit tends to blow where it will, and no one can contain it. No one can contain the Holy Spirit. And so oftentimes we speak less about the movement of the Spirit in the church. I wonder how the Spirit is moving 
in the church today. I wonder what power do we receive today as church and churches, even in the midst of the present state of the world? Do we still have the power to embrace diversity? Or are we still only concerned that people who look like us and speak like us and have the same background like us should be in church with us? Are we able to appreciate the one who is different, the one who may have a darker colored skin, the one who speaks with an accent that we sometimes aren't fully able to understand immediately, but with a little more listening, we might be able to understand. The one who cooks food a little more spicy than we would cook food. The one who eats foods completely different from ourselves. Are we able to accept the diversity of the people who may love people differently from us? Those who may love the same gender as themselves? Are we able to open up and include the diversity of persons who may not ascribe to the binary understanding of gender, but recognize that all of us are made in the image of God? Recently in the news in the United States, there have been reports of issues of prejudice and racism occurring. As the prophetic people of God, are we able to show the world something different? because we have the power to embrace diversity? Are we as a church still having the power to go beyond our walls of our church, to go out into the community and cause persons to hear that which we believe, not only in what we say, but in the way we live and in the things that we do? Indeed, my friends, it is said that Canada is becoming an a-religious country. Many persons no longer come to church. But isn't this the opportunity for us to show that we are the church? And by how we live, causing others to know what we believe and to know that we have the power to do it. Do we still have the power to face up to the criticisms around us, to say, yes, we have not been perfect as church. We have not been perfect because we're human. And even in the midst of the criticism, not to shy away, but to stand up in the face of criticism and still carry on the work that we have been called to do. One good thing about this pandemic has been the can-do spirit that has descended on many of us. Now all of us seem to be technologically experienced and experts. All churches, most churches, seem to be now broadcasting over the internet in one way or the other. And from the oldest to the youngest, we're having Zoom conferences and Google classes. It's no longer something that we are afraid of. Could it be that this pandemic has shown us that we have the power to do? We have the power still to be the church. To proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, to proclaim the goodness of God in the face of horrible atrocities in this world, to proclaim and to show that we are not alone and that God loves all, even in the midst of selfishness in our world. May it be that as we celebrate Pentecost today, that we may have a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit reminding us that we have the power, the ability to be church, even in our world today. Amen.
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. At the beginning of time, your spirit moved upon the waters of chaos as you called forth land and sea, mountain and valley, desert and tundra, jungle and grassy plain. Your spirit went before Moses and the Hebrew children, a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, leading them into the wilderness. Your spirit roused the hearts of the prophets who proclaimed your judgment upon the nations and called for repentance among your people. For these mighty acts of your Holy Spirit, we praise your name and join in the eternal hymn of all the angels and saints who sing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, indeed, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son. By your Spirit, you anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives. By your Spirit, Jesus confronted the demons of oppression. In your Spirit, he rejoiced as his disciples did great work in his name. At his death on the cross, Jesus yielded up his Spirit to you, and by the Holy Spirit, you raised him from the dead. This same enlightening, empowering, enlivening spirit, Jesus proclaimed, promised to all who keep his commandments to love as he loved. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of his mighty acts and blessed promises of Jesus, we yield ourselves to you in union with this offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here out of love for you and on this bread and wine. Let the bread we break be true fellowship in the body of Christ. Let the cup we share be a true participation in the new covenant of his blood. By your spirit manifest in us the power of your redeeming love, that we may be Christ for the world, serving in his name through your Son, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup of blessing which we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body in Christ. The body of Christ given for us, let us eat and be thankful.
the blood of Christ shed for us, let us drink and be thankful. Together let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have fed us in this sacrament, reminding us that nothing can separate us from your love. Although we are physically separated from each other, unite us in your love. Continue to feed us through your Holy Spirit. Help us to live your risen life in our world. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, you have said that we should ask and we will have, seek and we will find, knock and the door will be opened. So we come asking, seeking and knocking. We come not just for ourselves, but we come bearing up in our prayers the needs and concerns of those around us. We pray this day for the world, the world that you have created. Your world has been in the past, in the past two months dealing with the effects of a global pandemic. Many have become sick and life as we knew it has changed. We remember before you the more than 340,000 persons who have died during this pandemic. Each of these persons are known to you by name and the tears of their families and friends are seen by you. We ask for your comfort to those who mourn. Show us how to care and comfort each other. We pray for our country and our province. 
We remember in our prayers those who are unemployed and those whose employment is uncertain. We bring to you those who live without, who have no shelter, no income, no support. We also remember those who because of staying home must live under the fear of domestic abuse and violence. Give us the eyes to see and the ears to hear the concerns and needs of those living around us. Strengthen our will and help us to discern the best ways that we can offer assistance and help to those in need. Show us how to be channels of your hope and love. We remember also at this time those who face discrimination and prejudice because of their race, color, culture, sexual orientation, or gender expression. We hold before you all who have experienced racism and microaggressions. Give us the power to stand up and speak out against any form of prejudice or racism. Help us to celebrate the diversity which you have created and to accept each other as persons made in your image and likeness. At this time of year, we remember all who will be graduating from schools, those who will be continuing their educational endeavors, and those who will be entering the labor market. Help us to rejoice with them for their accomplishments. Be with them as they journey on and give them your guidance as they face the future. Show us how to support and help. We are your church. We are your church because of the Holy Spirit. And without you, we can do nothing. We bear before you all churches throughout the world, and we bear before you our own church, the United Church of Canada. We bring before you the concerns and cares of all our communities of faith. As we contemplate the best ways to reopen our church buildings, help us to discern the best ways that we can be good neighbors, especially to those who are vulnerable. Give us your wisdom as we contemplate the ways to be your called out people in this new normal in which we live. Help us to continue to live out our calling as your people. These prayers we offer to you in your name. And now, let us together say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. My friends, go in peace, and may the God of peace go with you always. Amen. <laughs>